Hello grandchildren, it is currently 9.55 on a Thursday, it's Thursday, it's Thursday, and uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about adventuring, but real quick before I get to the adventuring part, I just want to let you guys know that my si my older sister Amy is graduating from college, and I, in two days I'm going to go up to UNR and watch her graduate, and that's terrifying because it seems like just yesterday uh, we were both like belittled and... <sighs> It's, I can't handle it. I know that you're not supposed to say this until you get old, but life moves way too fast. And I feel like actually I'm just going to keep saying that sentence uh, as I get older. Just slowly get more panicked and frantic uh, in how I say it the older that I get. Anyway, what I want to talk to you guys about today is how anything can be an adventure and how adventuring is more of a lifestyle than anything else, even if it's just crossing the street. That actually, it, uh, crossing the street's terrifying. I mean, there's cars that are moving really, really quickly, and if you trip, I mean, that, what if they don't see you? I, I didn't even consider that. That's actually, crossing the street is probably the greatest adventure of all, besides love. And you can write that down. So to preface this, I wanted to talk about being young. Uh, just like anyone else, I was five at one point. And I remember when you're little, you watch a lot of TV and stuff. At least I did. Maybe this, I mean, maybe in the future, you guys don't watch a lot of TV or it doesn't exist. Or they found out that watching TV gives you cancer in your eyeballs or something. Uh, whatever the, the reason is, I, I don't know. But the point is that when I was growing up, there was a lot of TV involved with my life, especially because I lived with my two sisters and my dad, and my mom had left when I was really young, so uh, we had babysitters a lot, and babysitters aren't going to talk to you all day, they want to just sit there and read the newspaper or whatever, like they do. So I'm sitting there watching a lot of TV while my dad was at work, and I think there's one thing that links all sorts of video media made for kids, and that's adventuring. Uh, from a very young age, we're drill it's drilled into our heads, uh, the idea of what an adventure is. I mean, a lot of the movies that we watch are adventures. It's talking cars that are going out into the world and being spies and rescuing people. It's anthropomorphic animals that get lost in the wilderness and have a great adventure trying to find their way back home. A prince going on a great adventure to save the princess from the tower. It's almost drilled into little kids' heads that the epitome of life is adventuring. Uh, but I think that it's lost along the way that you grow up. And the, the, one of the reasons is because our parents are a little bit uh, protective, as they should be, because they're your parents and they don't want their kids to die, probably. And if they do want their kids to die, you probably aren't going to make it. That sucks for you, except you're probably not even watching this. I hope that, I mean, I'm not talking directly to you because that would mean that my kids had killed you. I'm gonna shut up now and continue on with what I was talking about. When you're five, you want to climb over that fence and go see what's on the other side, but your parents know that's probably not a good idea because there may be a dog over on the other side of the fence or a man with a gun and uh, whatever, so you're not allowed to do a lot of things. And uh, thankfully, a lot of parents slowly kind of loosen the restrictions, but not before you're taught that the reason you don't explore things. This isn't necessarily an intentional lesson that the parents were trying to give you, but uh, I think a thing that a lot of kids are taught is that things that are unknown that you have a tendency to want to explore uh, can be dangerous. The unknown is dangerous because anything could be there. You don't know. I think a lot of people, as they grow older, uh, keep that that lesson with them for the rest of their lives where something seems scary or they don't know how it's going to turn out or uh, they feel nervous about something, they want to not do that thing a lot of the time. There's a lot of people out there who don't want to talk to a stranger because they're worried that they could be a serial killer or something, or maybe that that person just might not like them. And while both of those are definitely valid reasons for being worried about something, that's where the lesson of adventuring that was bestowed upon you when you were a little child uh, comes in handy. When you think about it, every single adventure story that you can probably think of, most of them didn't turn out that bad. There was definitely bad things on a lot of them, dragons and broken legs and butterflies that 
eat you. There's always something that that hero has to battle and eventually overcome and continue on with their journey so that they can be successful. And that's, I think that's a, the, the most important part of the mindset of adventuring is that um, there isn't roadblocks. There's little mountains that you can climb over and continue on your way. Uh, the essence of adventuring, I think, is being able to roll with the punches. I guess I should define what an adventure is for me. Uh, I think an adventure is just something that seems scary or uncomfortable or maybe not something that you would usually do that you now want to try to do or overcome or accomplish, whatever that thing was. And I think that as long as you keep that kind of loose definition of adventure, anything could be an adventure. Anything that was scary that you didn't want to do, anything can be an adventure. And though this, this far in life, and keep in mind that I'm very young and naive, but this far, I have not been disappointed since I started becoming what I would call an adventurer. Redefining any problem into an adventure can make it amazing. And, and sometimes the, the scary aspect is something that can be the most enticing. Just like kissing or drinking milk that's been on the table since yesterday, this, the scary side of it can be one of the most motivating parts. I want to give you a couple examples from the real world that I've done. My senior year of high school, uh, my girlfriend told me that I should uh, do the talent show. I should audition for the high school talent show and see if I could get in because I play piano awfully, I sing awfully, and I write songs awfully. Uh, she told me I should do it, though, because she's my girlfriend, and that's part of her job is to be all encouraging and stuff. Now, I'm a very self-conscious person, and I hate most of the things that I make, but, uh, I mean, I, I figured, you know, it'll be an adventure. What's the worst that can happen? I'm going to graduate this year, and most of these people I'm never going to see again. So if I am just totally awful, I only have to deal with them hating the thing that I did for like a month. I'm not going to be embarrassed for that long and then I move on with my life and it'll be an adventure. So I did it and I got in and it was terrifying and I don't think that I did that good. I got third place but I think that was more because I was the only person that actually wrote the song that they were performing and there's a couple other people that sang and stuff. I, I honestly think that was purely because uh, I like... And it's like, oh, that's cool that he wrote this song also. Instead, of he's just singing somebody else's song. Because that's lame. But I, I, I did it, and actually it wasn't that bad. Most people, really, were, most people and teachers were really supportive of the idea of me doing it. Uh, and that terror really, like, I mean, I'm a little bit better now at performing in front of people because of doing that. Because that was really pretty much the first time that I had ever sung in front of that many people alone. And it was terrifying, but I don't regret it, and I know that I probably would have regretted it if I hadn't done it, because that's the way the things work in this universe. You you regret the things you don't do more than you regret the things that you do badly. Another talent show that I did, uh, my sophomore year, I went on the Yosemite Institute trip, uh, which is pretty much the McConnell Foundation in Reading, uh, sends a bunch of local high schoolers to go spend a week at Yosemite National Park, and it's absolutely fantastic, it changed my life really, really a lot, and, uh... And I remember, I went to the backpacking part, so I wasn't with, you know, the whole crowd of people. I was just like my 14, you know, backpacking buddies uh, for most of the trip. But at, towards the end, there was this kind of like makeshift talent show with hundreds of kids that were all from like Northern California. Um, and my best friend Logan, he went up and he played uh, on this acoustic guitar that somebody had. Uh, I think it was Stairway to Heaven. And he is a fantastic guitarist. He's the best guitarist that I've ever uh, known or seen. Uh, I mean, in person. Uh, so he did that, and then there was somebody, like, did a magic trick, and there was, like, a bunch of people doing kind of, like, talents. And uh, right then, I don't know why, but I decided that I wanted to go up onto the stage for my talent. And I didn't have a talent that I could do in front of people. Uh, but I knew of this weird thing that I could do that's definitely not a talent, but it's a thing that would be terrifying to do in front of people, but why not? It'll be an adventure. So I walked up on the stage, and this is something that I learned, I kind of like taught myself how to do in like second or third grade. I don't know how I figured it out that I could do it, but there's this thing I could do with my cheek where it kind of like flaps, and I could do this thing with my teeth where I like blow air across them, and then it makes this weird kind of, I'll just do it for you. I walked up onto the, the stage for the talent show, and I looked at everybody, and I, I just kind of like, took a minute quietly and everyone was staring and I looked up 
and I went <laughs> and there was a, there was actually an incredible applause. I thought that it would just be like a couple of people laughing and then silence, but uh, it was actually like everyone started cheering and clapping and stuff, and then I walked off, and it was totally worth it. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. That's really the essence of it. Uh, by renaming these terrifying things into adventures, it leaves you open uh, to, to trying something. And even if you fail, uh, you don't usually like, I mean, I guess that's another mindset kind of thing, but uh, worst case scenario, you have a really awesome story generally, or at least a decent story. Small adventure. I tell a joke. Nobody laughs. And that's it. And for some reason, I actually, I really enjoy telling people about me telling jokes and nobody laughing. Like, that's the funniest story for me to tell for some reason. I don't even know why. I love the idea of thinking back, just how humorous it looks like in my head when I think that something is really funny and nobody else does. And that happens quite regularly in my life. But every time, it's like a little adventure. And sometimes people think it's funny, and that's great. Sometimes nobody thinks it's funny. And then, oh, well, I just told a joke, and nobody liked it. <laughs> Let's move on with life. Uh, and th th that's it. Except So then, I mean, if you keep doing that, eventually you're going to tell some jokes that people actually laugh. And most of the time, people aren't going to remember the jokes that they didn't like as much as the ones that they did like. Uh, unless you, like, offend people, then they're probably going to hate you forever. Anyway, most recently, my biggest adventure right now is me going to Australia, and I haven't had that many little adventures in my life because I've been kind of preparing for this really big one, and I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know what this film school is like. I don't have a place to live in Australia yet. I'm going to have to get to Australia and figure out where I'm going to live. And I could think that the film school is a joke. That I already know everything that this school is trying to teach me, and it was completely pointless to go across the world for this. I could, I, I could just hate Sydney. I, I it could just be an awful city uh, that is unpleasant, and there's like a lot of homeless people or stuff, something. I could get stabbed first thing when I get off the plane. Uh, but the thing is, I know that I've been taught everything that I need to know about this adventure from those stories that I remember from when I was little, from the movies that I remember from when I was little, and from my own experience being what I would like to call an adventure, even if it's with the little things, even if every joke is an adventure uh, and not just, you know, exploring an insane asylum or something. I know that if I don't go to Australia, I'm going to regret it, probably for the rest of my life. I know that no matter what happens, i got to roll with the punches and keep on going and kind of improvise a little bit, and that's usually where you make the best stories. I know that it's probably not going to be all easy, and I'm probably going to be panicking for the first three or four months, but that's just one of the dragons you got to slay along the way, and by the time they reach the end, uh, generally it's worth it. Even if you fail, even if I don't end up liking Australia, even if the school's a joke, I get stabbed, and I don't find an apartment, so I'm living in a hostel for a month. Uh, even if all of those things are true, I know that even if everything goes wrong and I come back within two months, I'm going to love telling you guys about the time that I thought it would be a good idea to go to Australia, and it wasn't. And that's the thing, is uh, being an adventurer isn't about being dangerous. It's not about being the coolest person in the room. It's, it's about facing your obstacles effectively and not letting things that scare you prevent you or inhibit you from doing things. It's about asking that stranger in the elevator that looks like they probably stabbed a person five minutes ago what the most exciting thing they've ever done in their life was. It's about applying for that job that you think you're probably not going to get. Because the worst thing that could happen is you don't get the job and you move on. Best thing that could happen, your life has changed a little bit. I'm just saying that that, that that side of you that maybe you haven't had since you were six or seven because you were taught that exploring can be dangerous 
If you can remember that just a little bit, even if it's just in your day-to-day -day life, your adventure doesn't have to be climbing a mountain or leaving the country. It can be apologizing to somebody that you've wronged a long time ago. And I know that sounds lame, but thats I think that's one of the scarier things that you can do in, in this life is admitting that you were wrong. Just for those moments, remember that maybe those cartoons were kind of right, that it's going to turn out fine in the end as long as you... You, you try and you roll with the punches and whatever happens you you don't give up that's really that's all the adventurous spirit is being an adventurer is about not seeing roadblocks but seeing an obstacle course being an adventurer is about saying yes even to things that you probably didn't want to do because a lot of the time that can turn out better than you thought it ever could have now now no it is important to to be safe and to really look at consequences of, of your actions. And obviously, I'm not encouraging you to go out and murder somebody just because it'll be an adventure. Obviously, if something goes against your conscience, don't do it, even if somebody says that it'll be an adventure. But if it's just something that's maybe out of your comfort zone, not out of your, your conscience, why not do it? I think I already said this, but I think that as a general rule of life, uh, it's way better to regret doing things than to regret not doing things. I mean, obviously, besides murdering people, uh, you should probably regret not murdering somebody more than murdering somebody, because you're going to be in... Um, I think that's a given. Anyway, grandchildren, um, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys next week. Anyway, grandchildren, if you see me anytime in the, the near future... We should draw a cartoon together. Not like cartoons together. We should draw a single cartoon, uh, w including punchline, together. Just grab a piece of paper and a pen. We're going to draw a cartoon. Even if you can't draw, those are the best cartoons, actually. The ones that the artist could not uh, draw at all, obviously. But the joke was there. Even if it's a dumb joke. I used to draw cartoons a lot, like little comics. They're awful. I should show them to you guys sometimes. They're They're so dumb. They're probably, they're, I regret those. <laughs> I don't know actually if I should show you them because they're, they're so dumb and you're probably with, will definitely, if you don't already think that I'm crazy, if you see some of my, my cartoons, you almost definitely will think that I'm crazy. Anyway, see you guys. Also, did you guys know that I could only wink with one eye? Okay, this is completely, I don't even know, this is going to be after, after the journal is over. But, uh, I remember when I was, uh, uh, I, I don't know, it was like sophomore junior year with Logan, uh, we both decided to replace, that's what she said, you know, like, it's for, like, sexual innuendos, if someone says something like that, you say, that's what she said, and it's funny, because then you point out that it was, like, an innuendo, uh, but we decided to replace that with a much more incognito wink at each other. Just to like, you know, let the other person know, like, that was a, that was an innuendo. But neither of us were really good at winking, so, but we started doing it a lot, and I got really, really good at winking my, my right eye. The thing was, I did not practice winking my left eye at all, so I winked my right eye hundreds of times. Anytime anyone said anything remotely innuendo-y, I would wink my right eye. And now, I can pretty, like, casually wink my right eye like that. No effort at all, just... Like that, and it's, I don't know if it, I don't know if that's a good wink or not. I just, like, it might be on the scale of, like, you know, winks. I don't, I don't know who's at the top of the bottom of the scale, because I don't, I don't, I don't have, like, a mental log of how good of winkers people are, but, uh, I mean, I don't know if my wink is a good one, but I know that it feels natural, you know, like, just, like, doing that. Uh, I could just do it quickly. Uh, my left eye, on the other hand, is a whole nother story because I never winked that one at all and I didn't work on winking that one. So I'll show you. Uh, right eye, like that. Left eye. Uh, I think I, I, I blinked that eye when I was trying to... Yeah, I, I can kind of... Um, see, now I'm just... It just turns into like that kind of thing when I'm trying to... So it, it's a whole nother... It, like, I mean, even if my, my right eye wink is just like a five, uh, my left eye wink is automatically it's like a negative one. It's like, hey, baby. It's great, isn't it? I can do the same thing with my eyebrow, like do the raising th one like that. 
Um, because when I was in like sixth grade, I saw, I think it was like Jim Carrey or somebody, or maybe it was Eddie Murphy do the eyebrow, one eyebrow raise. And I was like, I want to learn how to do that. So I spent like two weeks in front of a mirror, like every day after school, I'd go sit in front of a mirror and like try to figure out how to do the eyebrow raise thing with my hands. So then I finally got that down, but I never worked on doing the other one. So if I try to like raise my, my other eyebrow, it's just all messed up like that. Normal. And... I think the lesson here is that you don't commit fully to anything. Always half-ass it. And it pays off. Yeah. Anyway, bye. <laughs>